Hey guys, this is Max and welcome to another episode of the story behind the shoot. And today I have a very special photo set for you that I was allowed to create together with Munich Models. The photo set is entitled A Lonely Night Out and it shows a young, attractive woman who is really dressed to attract, so to speak, and who is completely alone at a bar, slowly getting drunk in the course of the evening, but remaining or staying alone. So there's nobody else coming up to her, no one approaching her, and the viewer, of course, in the course of the photo set, starts to wonder who is that woman. So she kind of becomes a mystery. Um, you want to get to know her, but the idea of the photo set is that it is not completely revealed. She remains a mystery and you're left wondering what this was all about and how it does go together. I wanted to create a timeless scene, so um, have a bar that kind of gives you this feel of um, maybe early 20th century Paris and that only reveals, the photo set should only reveal its origin in the 21st century through little hints and um, kind of suggestions here and there. That's also the reason why I decided to shoot it completely on black and white film, but I will get to that in a second. As a model, I was allowed to work with the beautiful Isabel, who is only 18 years old, but already represented by model agencies in New York, Paris, Milan, and Munich. And as I said, I was allowed to work with her through Munich Models, a, an amazing agency here in Munich, and it was, very, it was such a pleasure to work with them on that particular set and to create it. So thanks for that uh, here. And together with the stylist Evgenia Stamler, um, we decided to go for smoky eyes for the model, curly hair, and also kind of pick a dress and overall clothes that would add to the idea of a woman um, dressed to attract and to draw people's attention but also to her melancholic eyes and to her loneliness and sadness that she should portray as well. And as a location, I chose uh, Mauro's Negroni Club here in Munich, Hadhausen, precisely because it feels like such a timeless place. Um, based on what they say on their website, they even have some interior design pieces and, and some wood on the walls that has actually been imported from Paris and some of the items are over 100 years old and you can actually see that and feel that once you're there. Um, and of course I needed that kind of atmosphere to create this timeless feel that I wanted to create. And in my opinion it really turned out beautifully. What was also nice was that the owner Mauro was present throughout the entire photo shoot and kind of um, provided us with coffee and very nice background music so the over overall atmosphere of the photo shoot kind of fit what we were doing. We had some bar music in the background, we had drinks we wanted them and overall we had a very relaxed atmosphere and I think that is important um, and some of you might know what I'm talking about because sometimes you have photo shoots that take place in a studio and are meant to portray something in a particular way but then you have the sound of the flash going on, you have um, all sorts of chatter in the background and it is really hard to focus and to get in the kind of atmosphere and mood that you want to portray. And in that case, it was completely different and um, the entire analog process, also shooting with analog cameras, uh, kind of added to that slowed down mood and the kind of atmosphere that we wanted to create. So in terms of equipment, I used the Mamiya RZ67 with a 110mm Secker lens that I shot completely wide open, so at f2.8 uh, throughout the entire set. Um, and I did that because I wanted to retain that medium format, shallow depth of field um, look. And I wanted to have these blown out highlights in a beautiful bokeh. And as a film, I settled on Kodak Triax, a classic that I decided to rate at ISO 400 so that I shot on box speed, at box speed. Um, because some people already asked me via Instagram whether I had pushed this um, film to get the kinds of results that I had. No, I didn't. I instead settled on 
um, slower shutter speeds. So I shot from a tripod um, with shutter speeds ranging from one thirtieth of a second um, to one eighth of a second. And since the model was familiar with working with analog, analog um, cameras, that wasn't a problem at all because she already knew when to kind of hold still and um, ensure that the image would be in focus and sharp. What is also important to mention here is um, that I brought along my digital Leica T uh, to test the settings prior to shooting with the Mamiya. So, and the reason for that is that I wanted to kind of lose details in the background to have rather strong blacks and to draw the viewer's attention to the model's skin, the, the, the face, the arms and these kinds of highlights in the images in the images and therefore kind of um, blacken out the background as much as possible without underexposing the film. So in ca contrast to what I would usually do where I would kind of meter for the shadows underneath the model's chin. In this case, I was metering more to, for the highlights and almost underexposing the shots um, because I didn't want to kind of blacken out the background in post-production, but instead kind of expose it right away the way I wanted it to have. And that process really worked out well. So I had the Leica T in addition to my Gosson Starlight 2 light meter and was able to kind of get readings that made sense to me <laughs> and that translated perfectly well onto the film that I shot. Um, what is also important to mention uh, with that kind of interior setup is of course that we had some additional light um, or artificial light that we brought along. So I tried to work as much as possible with the natural light coming through the windows and you will see that in the images that I positioned her to next to the window as much as possible. But in addition to that, we brought a mobile prior light with a beauty dish and a reflector. And in addition to that, a rather very simple and expensive uh, fill light uh, that we positioned in a way so that it was directed towards the ceiling. So we had some additional light bouncing off the ceiling here and there. But most importantly, we used the mobile prior light. And what is important to mention here is, of course, this the primary use case for that would be flash. But we kind of cheated and used the, <laughs> the setup light feature as a continuous light. <laughs> uh, because that was uh, more than enough, everything that we needed basically for, for that purpose. And we got the kind of diffuse and soft light that we wanted to. And that worked really well as a primary light. And then having natural light from the side on many, uh, on many occasions, plus some fill light um, bouncing off the ceiling. This was more than enough um, to have some really nice light situation and to be able to shoot at ISO 400. So without further ado, let's take a look at the final images of this photo set and I hope you enjoy them. So I hope you enjoyed this photo set. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. Please also leave us a comment in the comment section below. We're always interested to hear your feedback. If you want to see more videos like that, please subscribe to our channel. Again, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.